Aleluya. Aleluya. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you so very much. Um, I'm truly honored to be here. Please help me appreciate the great man of God, Pastor Godman and his dear wife. Give them a big God bless you. Thank you so, so much, sir. Thank you for this honor. May the Lord honor you in Jesus' name. And I extend my salutations and gratitude to the entire leadership. Thank you for this opportunity. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' matchless name. Shall we lift our hands to heaven and ask the Lord to speak to us? You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger. Spirit of the living God, we submit ourselves to your wisdom tonight and we pray that our lives be transformed, that indeed will be elevated. We submit ourselves to your wisdom and we ask that you will help us and let Jesus be glorified. For in Jesus' matchless name we have prayed. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's my pleasure to um, bring God's word. I believe in the power of the word. God's method, I would always say, is his word. His method to lift is by his word. His method to bless is by his word. Hallelujah. The Bible says in John chapter 1 and verse 3, Speaking about the word, it says, and without him was not anything made that was made. That means outside of the word, nothing can be made. Not a life, not a destiny. Without him was not anything made that was made. Hallelujah. So we'll discuss a few things along the team tonight. And I'm praying that God will open our hearts and grant us understanding in Jesus' name. Let's begin our discussion from the book of Ephesians 1 and verse 3. I'll read two scriptures and then we'll trust to be transformed by that which the Lord will reveal to us. Ephesians 1 and verse 3. Paul is speaking to the church in Ephesus and he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us. Take note who had blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. So Paul is mentoring the church in Ephesus and he's bringing a very profound information to guide their understanding. He's saying that our father, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ had blessed us. He's speaking to believers, blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He's saying this is the heritage of every believer. That this spiritual blessing is the heritage of every believer and it is routed through the office of the Christ. Are we together? So he's giving a very profound information that a lot depends, the, your excelling in life depends on this kind of orientation that every spiritual blessing has been given to the believer in Christ. Scripture number two. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. If we're together, please say amen. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 8. Paul began to talk 
on sowing and reaping, giving and receiving, but then he makes a very profound statement in verse 9. Here's what he says. And God is able to make all grace. Say all grace. All grace. He's talking about all the dimensions of grace. Immediately, you can see from this scripture that grace is multifaceted multi-dimensional so he says god it is within his ability to make all grace abound towards you that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work he says all grace produces all sufficiency all grace god is able you know what it means to be sufficient to be sufficient means to be capable, lacking nothing, always rising to the occasion. That God is able to make all grace abound towards you, the believer, so that you having all sufficiency, that you will abound in every good work. If that is you, shout a loud amen. amen. So I wrote down here and I want to use this as a foundation that the believer's experience, please look up, the believer's experience as designed by God was supposed to be your faith adventure is supposed to culminate to a life of excellence and glory. Now, you have to find a way of accepting this as a reality that every believer in Christ, regardless your background, regardless what it had been before your encounter with Christ, that once you are in Christ and you have encountered the Lord Jesus Christ, you have a heritage and a destiny of excellence and glory. You believe that? Say amen. Now, it matters that your life reveals the excellency and the glory of God. There are many scriptures in the Bible that reveals and attest to the fact that the believers rising brings glory to God. Are we together? In Matthew chapter 5, Jesus was teaching what we call the Beatitudes. And verse 13, he begins by saying, ye are the salt of the earth. He says, now if the salt has lost its saltiness, wherewith shall it be salted? That it is good for nothing except to be trampled other foot by men, of men. Then he says, you are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Then he says, neither, that means it's an anomaly, it shouldn't happen. Neither should do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but that they put it on a lampstand and it gives light to everyone there. Are we together? Verse 16 now says, let your light, the word let means permit, let your light so shine, not just before spirits, not just before angels, before men that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. So there is a mandate upon every believer that in, when the glory and the excellency of the kingdom is revealed in and through your life, Jesus is glorified. In John 15 and verse 8, the Bible says, John 15 and verse 8, it says, Herein is my Father glorified. When ye bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. When you go to verse 16 of the same chapter, it says, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. Are we together? Are we still together? Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. Paul was speaking to the church in Ephesus. And he says we are his workmanship. His workmanship. The tools that an artist uses to display his creativity. We are his workmanship, he says. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. He's not wondering what to make out of our lives. He's saying we have been predestined unto a life of glory and grace. I'm showing you from scripture that every one of us, whether you walk in that reality or not, is not the issue. That in the mind of God, this is his blueprint for every believer. A life of excellence and a life of glory. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10. Paul said to the intent that now unto principalities and powers might be made known by the church the multifaceted manifold wisdom of God. 
That means the end of my Christian experience and your Christian experience should be a testament that brings glory to the name of the Lord. The dexterity and excellence that comes from your life. Your life should be a wonder and a marvel to all and sundry. And this has nothing to do with being a preacher. Are we together now? Yes. Is it not in your Bible that the path of the just is as a shining light? That it shines more and more. More and more is the destiny of every believer. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? Yeah. Galatians chapter 1 and verse 24. Paul was speaking and he made a very profound statement. And they glorified God in me. They glorified God in me. In fact, the Bible says, I and the children that the Lord has given me. He says, we, we are for signs and for wonders in Israel. So settle it once and for all that you have been ordained by reason of your coming into Christ. You have been born into a life of excellence, a life of glory. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. This is very important. You would think that this is so basic and simple, but until you agree with God on this wise, you may never see the glory of God find expression in your life. The Bible calls us living epistles. That means this Bible is not the only Bible that we have. You are literally a living epistle. That when someone closes his Bible, you cause that Bible to still be open through your life. He can continue his Bible study by studying your life. That whatever he did not understand in the room, God will refer him to your life as an explanation to what he was learning. Living epistles. Are we still together? So God has ordained every believer in Christ to a life of excellence and a life of grace. The second thing that I want you to know is that the manifestation of that glory depends on our accessing and engaging the mysteries of the kingdom. Now, please listen carefully. Haven't established the fact that you and I have been ordained by God to a life of grace, a life of excellence, beauty, and color. Walking in the manifestation of that truth does not just depend on God's desire and his intent. It depends on our, number one, accessing and then number two, engaging the mysteries of the kingdom. That means the possibility exists that in the entire lifetime of a believer, even though in Christ, that you may never truly live out the fullness of your God-given potential. And it will not be an issue of his love or his desire. It will be the absence of your comprehending the ways of God or failing to engage accordingly. It says there remained a rest for the people of God. Even though they are the people of God, there is still a Sabbath that they are yet to enter. It says today, if you hear his voice, he says to harden not your heart as they did in the wilderness. Are we together? This is very, very important. That in as much as prophetically speaking, God has ordained a life of grace and excellence and glory, it is your, the, you see, the manifestation of this Zoe life that we have received is knowledge dependent. In ignorance, you cannot manifest the potential of this divine life. Ephesians 4 and verse 18, having their understanding darkened, it says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their minds. Psalm 82 from verse 5, it says, They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. The next verse says, I have said, ye are gods and all of you are children of the Most High. Verse 7 says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes. So it takes knowledge to bring you to a point of stature and strength. Because the Bible says, Galatians 4, for an heir, even though he's an heir, for as long as he's a child, he differeth not from a slave, even though he be Lord of all. Are we together? Very important. 
So Paul says in Acts chapter 20 and verse 32, he says, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, he says, which is able to build you up huh? and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. So, just believing that I am rising to a level of grace and influence and power, that is wonderful, but it may rob you if you do not understand that the manifestation of the glory in the life of the believer is predicated upon your accessing and engaging. Take note, two expressions, accessing by light, and then engaging. This conference seeks to create a platform for us to rise and to fly higher in life. And it is in your destiny. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 12 and verse 3, it says that they that be wise shall be like the firmament of the heavens and they that turn many to righteousness even as the stars forevermore. So there is no doubt as to the fact that we have been ordained to a life of grace. But Galatians 2 and verse 2 says, I went up by revelation not by desire i went up galatians 2 and 2 i went up by revelation it takes more than desire it takes more than a sincere heart to become a pace setter a trailblazer the difference between any two believers is not the love of god the difference between the bible says the same lord is rich unto all every believer defines his possibilities to the degree to which you labor in the spirit to access and to engage the mysteries of the kingdom matthew 13 and verse 11 jesus is still teaching and he tells them it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven hallelujah access to light isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 says arise shine for your light is come and the glory of the lord you see that glory is related to light when there is no light there cannot be glory is that true yes you are able to see the beauty that is in our world today because it is a combination of your eyes and light. You don't just see because you have an eye. Of the light in this room, your eye is still healthy. You will still not see. So it's the union of your eyes and light that produces beauty and color. Are we together now? So it says, arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Amplified says, arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. It says, rise to a new light, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The next verse says, for darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but upon you his glory will arise. Verse 3 says, Gentiles shall come. I like this. You will not look for them. Gentiles shall come to thy light. And then he says, they are kings to the brightness of your rising. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. John the disciple, John the Baptist, the prophet, in John chapter 1 and verse 6, the Bible says there was a man sent from God. Are we still together? It says his name was John. Verse 7 says the same came for a witness to bear witness to the light that men through that witness might be saved. So settle it once and for all that in as much as God has designed a life of glory and grace, a life that reveals the multifaceted possibilities that are in Christ, it is predicated upon our accessing the truth. It says, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Hallelujah. If someone is learning, shout a loud amen. amen. It then means that any two believers please listen if your life is bankrupt of beauty and color if your life is bankrupt of glory if your life is not a perpetual ever increasing manifestation of the glory of god you have to go back and investigate um whether or not you are a student of the mysteries of the kingdom and i'll explain that in a moment 
the mysteries of the kingdom the mysteries of the kingdom that when you find the mysteries of the kingdom and you obtain grace to engage them the bible leaves you with an assurance that it is impossible for your life to be without beauty and to be without color even for jesus the son of the living god in as much as he was the word incarnate when he walked upon the earth from age 12 he submitted himself to learning the bible says in luke 2 and verse 52 that even jesus increased in wisdom is that true yes in stature and in favor with god and with men at age 12 he was under the doctor's learning that it is written he used against satan he learned it as a teenager so when satan came he did not say i think i imagine i wonder an opinion he said it is written it is written hallelujah so god desires for our lives to be a revelation of his excellency now please look up there is from a spiritual standpoint there is no destiny that has an advantage by default from a spiritual standpoint there is no destiny that has any advantage by default your advantage begins when you encounter christ that means any life no matter how glorious outside of christ can be frizzled out in a moment the story of Job is a lesson for all men that in one day a man's world can crumble completely. Are we together? Yes. That insurance and assurance that every believer has, your, your advantage, the systems of advantage in your life begins to count at your encounter with Jesus Christ. But now when you come into the kingdom, please listen, when you come into the kingdom, the structure of the kingdom is such that when you now become a believer, you submit to the ministry of the Holy Spirit, you submit to the ministry of the Word of God. Are we together? And submitting to the Word of God begins to expose you to the ways of God. Hidden in the ways of God are the mysteries of the kingdom, the modus operandi of the kingdom. You now begin to learn how things work in the kingdom. You now begin to learn how favor happens, how restoration happens, for instance. Are we together? Yes. Now, two believers differ in their results because one may have been under a teaching priest, just like pastor was sharing, according to Jeremiah 3.15, that I will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart and that they will feed you with knowledge and with understanding. Happy is the man who finds a teaching priest that mentors you methodically, line upon line, precept upon precept, helping you to understand the ways of God. Are we together? This is what church is supposed to be. A convergence of believers who come to learn the ways of God. That you should live every service wiser, gaining mastery, understanding the things of the Spirit. Because the Bible says, he that strives for mastery is not crowned, except he strives lawfully. You can lay hold of eternal life with intelligence and understanding, not doubting your results. You can know that you have found the keys. Listen, when it has to do with knowing God and loving God and seeking him, our pursuit is infinite. Even in heaven, there is still room to come up here. But when it has to do with excelling in the earth, the truths that you need to win are finite. You can hold them. Did you get what I just said? That the body of knowledge, the truths required for the excelling of the believer are not infinite they are finite like a medical student passes through a school knowing that there is a curriculum you can exhaust it does not mean that your learning stops but you can exhaust the curriculum and you are certified as a doctor this is how it is with the work of faith you can exhaust the body of truths that have been allocated the bible calls it marvelous light it is a spiritual curriculum that when you pass through methodically, there is a kind of believer you should become. Hmm. Hallelujah. You imagine with me a naive but determined young gentleman or lady determined to be a doctor. Imagine their first day 
in the university or the medical school you would look at that person and almost laugh to scorn but let that person pass through that system methodically after six years or seven years you come into the hospital and there's the same person seated with confidence ready to inject you ready to counsel you add a few more times and then with diligence and that person has become a consultant while you are crying and lamenting it tells you calm down there's no cause for alarm i know what to do they are not doubting they can write a prescription and never have to call you back to verify if it worked there is a level of mastery they would have gotten so this conference is bringing us to a higher level of mastery listen there is no pilot that flies by mistake no you can move a car learning and playing around just because gravity supported you and the car began to move you may not even know what you are doing until you hit a tree but you the the dynamics of flying an airplane it requires a level of mastery amateurism will not work are we together now yes sir there are times where a car can move on its own because the brake failed or the handbrake failed and if you are fortunate to be sitting in front of it even in ignorance you will flatter yourself for the few minutes left before an accident believing that you are driving that car but can that happen with an aircraft the laws are many it takes intelligence and precision so when you want to fly high in life it is not in the presence of ignorance god is bringing you listen god is bringing you to a place of mastery where you do not fear your results again because you have laid hold on eternal life you can reproduce it again and again it's important for you to understand that god's jealousy and integrity is back of his laws that by these two immutable things it is impossible you are not the first to desire influence you are not the first to desire prosperity you are not the first to desire all of these systems of advantage the bible says the things that are written are for time they are written for our learning so that we through faith and patience is that true might find hope apostle can god bring a miracle of fruitfulness study abraham that's why his story was left there is it true that god can raise a weak person to become mighty study gideon study joseph study the village girl called hadassah esther so that when god is saying i'm lifting you there is a reference that your faith can latch upon something hallelujah now very quickly I want to take one of these systems of advantage as a case study tonight and please in the name of jesus for the next 10 20 minutes i request that you lend me your attention because what you are about to learn by the integrity of scripture i want to assure you that if you understand what i'm about to show you you will wave your today goodbye and it will wave you back once and for all you will be ready to open be open to a life a destiny of grace you will marvel and wonder at who you have become you believe that say amen, amen. dominion over time i want to talk very briefly on dominion over time let's discuss the subject of dominion over time i'm teaching on speed tonight dominion over time let's look at one scripture very quickly genesis chapter 27 um the full text is from verse 1 to 20 but then for sake of time let's just go to verse 20 so a, a quick recap on the story this was isaac about to bless his sons remember the story jacob and esau so he sends esau to the field to get venison and bring prepare for him that which he wanted so that he would bless him and then jacob's mother heard this and then she liars with jacob and you know the story so the verse of emphasis is verse 20 if you can see it projected i would plead that we read as many who can see ready one to read and isaac said to his son uh-huh how is it that thou hast found it so quickly please stop 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 don't rush just look at what you are reading so he sends his son 
and he knew that under normal circumstances you should not have arrived by now because there is a natural course you have to go hunting the skill required and then suddenly he hears that the child is back the venison is prepared and he says no something is wrong it shouldn't be it shouldn't be this fast how is it that thou has found it even though they were lying the point is not endorsing the lie is drawing out a mystery and a lesson from this situation look at the answer of the boy how is it that thou has found it so quickly he said because the lord your god has brought it to me this is the reason behind my speed by now i shouldn't have built under normal circumstances no if i'm to follow the natural progression of things i shouldn't have accomplished this this much but that there is a possibility in the dealings of god with men where men can dominate over time they can gain time and achieve mighty things within a short time you believe that how is it that thou has found it how did you find the secret so quickly how did you build the house so quickly how did you lift your loved one so quickly and you will tell them ebenezer god brought it to me there, there's something i i did business with god and in my work with god i found out that there is a possibility that men can dominate time now listen very carefully ladies and gentlemen destiny is measured in time destiny is measured as a function of time the unit of destiny is time the meaning of that is that whatever takes your time has taken part of your life and part of your destiny whatever you commit your life and your time to are we together yes you call the entire journey of someone from birth to death life time what do you call it life time is a function of time under normal circumstances the bible teaches under normal circumstances that time only goes forward it never goes backward under normal circumstances is that true you cannot reach into yesterday yesterday is gone you are only left with the memories isn't it mysterious that no sentiment and no bias can take someone into yesterday it's gone it doesn't matter what you do with the time the time does not depend on your seriousness or laziness it just moves whatever you do within that time does not matter this is very profound is someone learning now we do not have unlimited time the bible is clear as to that fact we do not have unlimited time every man's time on earth is finite jesus had this to say he said in I must walk the works of him that sent me. Is that in your Bible? While it is day, he said, for the night cometh where no man can walk again. So he's saying, listen, there is a sense of urgency to my life. I have to walk within this frame of time because if I miss out on this opportunity, the night will come where no man can walk again. In Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 15, Apostle Paul encourages us to redeem the time. To redeem the time. He says to walk circumspectly. The word circumspect means accurately. That means you do not have all that time to be guessing and experimenting your life. Your, your life and destiny requires a level of accuracy if you are to gain time. He says redeeming the time because the days are evil. Now please listen for various reasons reasons of ignorance reasons of carelessness demonic attacks it is very possible that a man can waste a major part of his lifetime this is where my teaching goes now for many many reasons ignorance i wrote here carelessness demonic factors many already have time against them hence a concept that we call delay what is delay delay means that time has gone ahead of you versus the accomplishments and the achievements that should happen within that time are we together now this is very important 
But I have good news for you. The Bible does not leave us in the dark. There are two principal systems of advantage that can help the believer to wield dominion over time. Number one is called restoration. Number two is called speed. Now, I'm not talking on two of them, but just for your knowledge, that every time you find yourself a victim of time, that time is against you, the Bible says to be comforted by the awareness of these two mysteries, that in the dealings of God with men, there is a phenomenon called restoration, and there is a phenomenon called speed. The union of speed and restoration equals dominion over time. And by this, I'm prophesying to someone that in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, it doesn't matter what has failed to happen within the time given. By these twin forces of restoration and dominion, may you gain time. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated and let me encourage you to listen carefully. Restoration is powerful. The assignment of restoration is to take the possibilities that were to be in your yesterday and move them into your today restoration is different from progress hallelujah progress just means that what was impeding you hitherto has now been taken so you keep moving but that is not restoration restoration means to be taken in the wings of the spirit and to be kept at the location you would have been if there was no constraint so just because you are moving forward does not mean you are restored. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. Is someone learning now? Restoration is powerful. Imagine with me that because you came from a family that was not, um, maybe not a Christian family. Let's say you got born again at 40. Congratulations, but did you know that time has gone? Is that true? It takes a long time to know God. It takes a long time to argue about the things of the spirit till you finally submit to the holy spirit it takes a long time to begin to build your faith by the time you are done you are already hitting 50 55 all of the achievements that were allocated within your time so the assignment of restoration is to take that which should happen from 10 to 20 to 30 and make it happen even within one year do you believe this the second which is my concern tonight is speed what is speed very mysterious spiritual concept speed i define speed as the ability accelerated accomplishment within a short period of time listen please accelerated accomplishment within a short period of time that means for us to say you have speed in your life the accomplishment must outweigh the time allocated accelerated accomplishment within a short period of time is called speed for instance if by the end of this year you come with your house your car and everything that would have taken others 10 years that is called speed are we together now yes a woman who may have been barren for five years and gives birth to triplets those triplets are not children those tri those triplets are testaments from heaven that god can give men speed is that true do you believe that hmm. speed accelerated accomplishments within a short period of time Ladies and gentlemen, there is truly a grace that can come upon a man and cause you to walk in speed that even within the time that is left, much can be done such that your life will never show any dent. There will be no lapse. That time. I'm saying this because I know that there are people here. You are looking at your life and saying, Apostle, the truth is that I got to know God late. I got to learn the things of the Spirit late. Coming from a family where nobody had risen, I had to manage all these wicked forces before even starting my journey. I have a word of hope and prophecy for you that in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, for many of you, it will not exceed this year. I say it again, it will not exceed this year. That which you are thinking will happen in 2026, 
2027 by the mystery of speed by this grace even before the ember month somebody will be celebrating already i hope you believe this yes sir hmm. and the hand of the lord came upon elijah is that in your bible and the bible says elijah ran on barefoot and he overtook the chariot of the king even down to Israel. ah so men can run men can run men can fly you can define your pace in life listen from abuja to lagos under normal circumstances if you're using a car it's about 10 to 12 hours minus arm robbers minus bad road and all of those kinds of things are we together the same distance by flight is exactly 50 minutes am i right on that and can even be faster depending on what kind of aircraft am i right on that same destination but the possibilities are defined because something was done to the aircraft and it is the speed of movement that brings that accomplishment listen in the name of jesus christ someone is changing their vehicle i'm not talking of a physical vehicle where you have been crawling to destiny a grace is coming upon you and by the power that raised christ from the dead you will experience speed in a way that will surprise you please be seated men can have dominion over time that men look at your life and they see there is absolute rest you are not threatened by time because you hold within your hand the keys that can manipulate time to your advantage the zenith of dominion is not dominion over things it is dominion over time because every other thing can come when there is time that was the prayer of hezekiah a dying man does not ask for more things he will ask for more time am i right on that if i leave the rich fool had things what god took away from him was time and his whole life was ruined let me give you four keys very quickly within the time that we have and then we pray is god helping someone my assignment is to provoke your spirit to look at your life and say this cannot be my destiny i'm i'm tired of giving excuses let me access superior graces and rise in a way and manner that brings glory to the name of the lord number one the first key that controls speed is wisdom matthew chapter 25 from verse 1 to 13 this is the parable of the ten virgins and the bible tells us that the bankruptcy of wisdom can translate to delay am i right on that yes we may not have the whole time let me just um narrate the story so the bible talks about ten virgins they were all virgins so it was not an issue of sin or righteousness it was wisdom and foolishness are we together now and it was time that revealed who was wise or who was foolish all of them looked wise but time began to separate them if you saw all of them in the morning you would call all of them wise but the delay of the bridegroom started separating them into two categories wise and foolish others took extra oil the bible says and others just ignored it and as time went on the bridegroom delayed you see why delay is dangerous if he came early all of them will be credited to be wise but the delay of the bridegroom began to reveal a deficiency in the virgins and then as time went on their lamp was still intact but the oil had finished and then they heard the sound they woke all of them and said the bridegroom is on his way coming and they begged the other five they said no go to them that sell and buy as they ran to go and buy we came back and they met the door closed 
so the bible says walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise redeeming the time because the days are evil if you are bankrupt of superior wisdom you cannot have dominion over time hallelujah coming for a conference like this is a manifestation of wisdom because in three days one week you can access light that redefines the next course of 10 20 30 years of your life it is a very profitable bargain help those under the anointing just just help that gentleman there listen are we together now wisdom the bible says wisdom is the principal thing it says in all you're getting get wisdom he said "Doth not wisdom cry he began to speak about wisdom by me kings reign and princes decree justice that with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness the excellency of wisdom show me a man who is limited by any factor but has access to wisdom i show you a man whose dominion is still intact wisdom number two very quickly the second key that controls speed is favor hmm. i can spend all night teaching you about this exodus chapter 12 and verse 36 exodus 12 36 let's read it together if you can see it please exodus 12 help us media exodus 12 36 are you ready let's read one to read and the lord gave the people favor in the sight of the egyptians uh-huh so that they lent unto them such things as they required listen they are about to leave for the first time in 430 years and the bible said where would they start working to get all the things they would need for the journey the bible says in one night something came upon those people I hope you know that those who were giving them this same thing were those who refused to give them straw one moment you are refusing to give a man straw the next moment you are giving him gold and begging him to live in a hurry now let me show you another scripture that will bless you do you love the bible yeah. esther chapter 2 and verse 8 and 9 never forget this scripture in your life if you are a christian this is Esther now, in the midst of many other virgins, hoping to be selected as queen. I want to show you something in verse 9, but let's read verse 8. The Bible says, And it came to pass, when the king's commandment and his decrees was heard, and the maidens were gathered together in Shushan, the palace, it says to the custody of Haggai, that Esther was brought also, so she was just one of many of the women, to the custody of Haggai, the keeper of the women. Let's read verse 9, Jesus. And the maiden pleased him. Uh -huh, and she obtained kindness. What was the result? And he speedily gave her. Stop. Stop. What did he do? Hmm. Because favor was upon her, the man speedily gave her. I don't know who has delayed in giving you there are things you should have handled right now there are there are signatures that would have been on that document and by now certain things would have happened in the name of Jesus may you be speedily given speedily given speedily given I prophesy to you be speedily given by the Spirit of the Living God please sit down that a woman a village girl can obtain favor from this man and he speedily gave her the bible talks about the cup bearer of a king called nehemiah that because that man had favor the king saw his countenance and said nehemiah why is your countenance falling and he said i'm here serving you and uh, the walls in jerusalem have not been rebuilt immediately without requesting favor at work the king gave him everything he needed and wrote letters so that nobody will harass him on the way. Favor is powerful. You may have heard me say, who hates you does not matter, but who likes you matters. That is the assignment of favor. There are 
there is a threefold feature of favor. If it is genuine favor, you know that favor is at work upon a man because you will see unusual kindness, unusual access, and unusual acceptance. If you do not find a cohabitation of these three forces, it was not favor. Unusual kindness, unusual access, unusual acceptance. These are the biblical tests that show the presence of favor in the life of a believer. One last time, unusual kindness, unusual access, unusual acceptance. So the forces that control speed, dominion over time, number one, wisdom, number two, favor, number three, speed provoking prayers. You can pray yourself to speed hallelujah in first kings chapter 18 just write for reference from verse 42 to 46 the bible talks about elijah praying that he submitted himself and he prayed and kept telling his servant go and look go and look go and look and at the seventh time he saw a cloud like the fist of a man's hand and he said tell the king saddle your donkey run i hear the sound of the abundance of rain and then he himself the hand of the lord came upon him and the bible says he ran on barefoot do you know what it means to run on barefoot and then overtake the chariots what kind of speed would that be hmm. but thou O oh lord art a shield for me my glory you lift my head but thou O oh lord art a shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head. You can lock yourself in the place of prayer and say, Lord, I need to ward off these forces that are impeding my progress. That the only thing growing in my life is my age. Nothing else is growing in my life. I, you, can, you can engage in strategic prayer. There is something about a believer that has been provoked unto righteousness. You can pray yourself. The Bible says, Jesus, listen. Jesus dismissed the apostles, the disciples now. They had used the boat and they had gone ahead of him. They were six hours ahead of him while he resorted to pray. Six hours. You would call that delay. But as soon as he was done praying, he got up and did not need a boat. He started walking and in no time he had caught up with them. To a point where they saw him and thought he was a spirit. And Peter said, if it be thou, bid me come. He said, you too can operate this dimension. Come. Come. A boat is only one of the ways you can move. There is still another technology by which men can walk upon storms. A boat will require skill and effort. But whilst you are walking. Do you believe this? That you can lock yourself and pray and say, Father, I've been in Lagos for 10 years, 20 years. The two-leaf gate of this city has not yet opened for me. I can pray. Dominion over time. Dominion over time. Dominion over time. It says, and I will restore the years. It is God it is within his power to restore years, not just things to restore years. Hallelujah. I know many people that after COVID, they almost plunged to depression. They lost money. They lost everything till date. Many have not recovered. Let me tell you the truth. I believe in process. But you see, you do not have all the time to crawl your way to an enviable destiny. That is why God left us an advantage. Speed being one of them. You can pray and rise up to find yourself in a realm of possibility that people will look at you and say how did you get here they will ask like isaac how come you have gotten this so early 
I thought when you graduate, you wait for at least 10 or 20 years. How come in one year, they have made you the African representative of this company? What happened? And you will answer them like Jacob answered. Only that you will not be lying. What you will be saying will be the truth. That the Lord had brought this. That there is a name he is called Ebenezer. That God can choose to help a man. Listen. There are many times where blessings have been released. That's, I started that scripture to tell you that everything you will need for life and godliness has already been released in Christ. But you see, it happens through men. The manifestation of greatness is highly men dependent. This is the reason why pastor was sharing on relationships. And there are demonic forces that can stop the men to meet you. He says, I desire to come to you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us do you know that it was the forgetfulness of one man that added two years to joseph in the prison we don't know how long he stayed in the prison but one helper who forgot somebody had a memory problem and another person was suffering it shout no way one more time say no way joseph remained in the prison Lord, but I thought you said I should have been out by now. The man to be used to bring him out forgot. The same way you've invested in the life of so many people and they left you with promises since 1999, since 2005, they forgot. Thank God there is a mystery called the book of remembrance. The Bible says, and that night could not Ahasuerus sleep. And he said, bring me the chronicles. I don't know who I'm speaking to. You have invested in the lives of people, in the lives of companies, in the lives of many, and they have forgotten you. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, may the book of remembrance be open for you. Yeah. Hallelujah. The Bible does not say it, but I believe with all my heart that in that prison, Joseph was praying. I don't have the time to show you, but you see, the prison is a mysterious place in destiny. It's a place where both good and bad people meet. The prison is like the cross. When you see people in the prison, don't be too quick to talk. You may be talking about Joseph or Jesus. On that cross, Jesus was there. On that cross, two thieves were there. Just because you see men on the cross, you don't know what face in destiny they are in. The prison is where both good and bad people meet. But prayer is what leaves others in the prison while others go out there. At midnight, Paul and Silas, is it not in your Bible? All of, they were not alone. But while others were lamenting, is this how our destinies will end? He said, no, I know I can do something to time. The Bible said they prayed, then they sang loud enough for everybody to hear. I'm sure they were saying, don't disturb us with this, your gibberish, these tongues you are praying. But heaven was moving and the Bible says it was not an angel that came. An earthquake. I've done a teaching on open doors. And if you care to know, let me tell you, there are three keys. Very quickly, anytime a door is closed, there are two principles for opening that door. Number one is by the use of right keys. When you use a correct key, a closed door opens. Number two, by knocking. The Bible says, for everyone that knocks, it shall be opened. So you are not the one who opens it. If you don't master relationships, your knocking will not work. Because the person at the other side must be your friend for the door to be open. And then number three, which is the one I want you to do this night. You don't use a right key. The urgency is too much. You don't knock. You shake the foundation and break the door. The Bible says when they sang, when the glory of God came in that prison, the door was not open. The foundation was rattled. And the Bible says, all doors open. How many? All doors. Financial doors. All doors open. It didn't matter how long they had been closed. Because you see, sometimes when you use a key and you pass, the door can close. Your children and those behind you will still be in bondage. But when you break that door, the Bible says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. 
listen I really want you to believe in the power of prayer you redeem time never take the time I was told graciously that you have invested so much time praying and preparing for this conference don't you ever call the ministry of prayer a waste of time many would rather sit down in front of a man's office from morning till night and he will come out and say sorry i've not seen you you just keep waiting there and they say i'm not angry i'm not offended whereas you can spend half that time with the master and then he begins to move men is god not called the father of spirits every spirit is on is subject to him hallelujah the father of spirits that you can pray why is this ministry not growing why is this business not growing why are our partners living the bible says is any man afflicted james 5 13 he didn't say let him lament let him pray let him pray luke 18 and verse 1 he spake a parable to the end that man provided you are a man god never prayed as god but when he became a man he prayed all day every time he spake a parable that men ought always to pray listen if you fold your arms and watch things not dive in your life waiting for sympathy or mother nature or some kind of sociological coincidences to happen for the believer you define your possibilities you are given access to partner with god god is provoking someone tonight he said the reason why satan seems to reign over your life is because you've not gotten angry enough to shut your door and pray yes sir you can pray seasons out of your life you can pray seasons into your life you can pray things out of your life you may not have the power to manipulate the unjust judge but you can pray he says there was a man who neither feared god nor regarded men may you never meet such a man in your life that must be a dangerous man he does not fear god he does not regard men what kind of a man is that i'm praying for you again may you not find that kind of man in your life when you find a man that fears god you can ask god to speak to him and he will obey when you find a man that regards men you can use relationships as a leverage but where, what do you do with a man who is a judge meaning he's not a dummy and yet he does not fear God he does not regard men and here comes a weak supposed helpless widow but prayer the Bible says she told him avenge me my adversary and for a while he will not listen to her but for her importunity her persistence the man said even though I do not fear God nor regard men but this woman continues to weary me so prayer wearies things everything that is a resistance it wearies it until it releases hallelujah let's wrap up so wisdom favor speed provoking prayer speed provoking prayer i'm seeing just like fire coming on seven in the number seven seven people i just said that speed provoking prayer and the lord is saying that you have been kept it's like an embargo has rested upon you and you are not able to rise i declare i don't know where you are help them please in the name of jesus christ please can you spare me five minutes pastor hallelujah in the name of jesus please bring them out for me if you can i decree and declare by the power that raised christ from the dead in the name of jesus everyone kaporo shadi kapaliata please bring them out for me there's a reason why i ask that you bring them out i command that devil to give way now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ now i want you please listen be your brother's keeper whether you are an usher or not because this grace for speed is going to rest on people and some of them will start running physically 
please hold them this is a sign and a wonder so they don't enjoy themselves lord there are people whose destinies must speak now everyone who has been under the yoke of delay i stand upon this grace in the name of jesus take that grace for speed take that grace for speed take that grace for speed receive that grace for speed no matter how long you have been delayed i come by the rod of a higher priesthood in the name of jesus the son of the living god elevation speed 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 in business speed in ministry 10 years in one year 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 bring them out in the name of jesus hear me there are families here you have been tied down so that no man don't lift up his head i want to release that grace in the name of jesus every family that has been stagnated go forward now go go forward go forward Go forward, go forward, go forward, go forward, go forward. I prophesy, go forward, I prophesy, go forward in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me, people of God. Your pastor has made you to invest time praying. This is the benefit of those times of prayer. This is the benefit of the prayer chain to prepare your spirit man hallelujah please be sensitive we're wrapping up already hear me everything god has told you should have happened in your life and is yet to ha happen by whatever means you keep seeing it prophetically but it does not seem to manifest in the name of jesus i stand in partnership with the grace upon your man of god and i declare let prophecy find expression let prophecy find expression let prophecy find expression please open your mouth in one minute and begin to pray in the spirit everywhere in this building begin to pray in the spirit you are stepping into a new prophetic season rising in the spirit pray hallelujah hallelujah i'm wrapping up listen please do not miss any session no matter what sacrifice you will make i'm lending my voice with pastor invite everybody you know in lagos if there's no space even if it's for them to stand outside it should stand outside because god is visiting even through this conference it's not just the title of a conference it's, it's the advantage that you have and there are many people who may not have this opportunity for a long time hallelujah now listen i gave you four keys i'm about to speak over those in front here. key number one is wisdom key number two is favor key number three is prayer speed provoking prayer the last key that controls speed is the prophetic Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13. The Bible says, And by a prophet, and 
by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet was he preserved prophetic decrees are not empty words the prophetic when it is engaged within the boundary of scripture now every time i talk about the prophetic i always want to observe that i know that there are issues unfortunately with authentic prophetic ministry across nigeria and africa but that does not mean that the prophetic does not have its place you ignore the prophetic your life will be stunted almost indefinitely the prophetic jesus your jesus needed three prophets in his life for his destiny to open up number one simeon the prophet number two anna the prophetess number three john the prophet that you call the baptist hallelujah 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 the lord is opening my eyes i'm seeing an email and it's written on that email congratulations this is what i'm seeing i'm seeing an email and on that email this is what i'm seeing congratulations i don't know who that is for but in the name of jesus i release that grace upon you for as, for as long as the lord lives you will testify hallelujah my time is up we have more sessions tomorrow morning and then in the night all of those who are in front in the name of jesus the son of the living god everything that is the work of darkness over your life i set you free from it now the lord is showing me a woman i'm seeing four years you are yet to have a child this is i'm seeing the number four four years because i'm hearing the cry of a baby please help that person yes and the lord is saying i should tell you remember you not the former things nor consider the things of old for behold i do a new thing in the name of jesus according to the time of life may you stand on this stage and testify hallelujah let me wrap up by speaking over your life tonight listen there are some of you you will not reach home before receiving your miracle i hope you believe it the bible says of the 10 lepers as they went they didn't arrive the place of a priest as they went i stand in partnership with the grace upon your man of god and i decree and declare in the name of jesus may my god who is also your god surprise you this night surprise you this night extraordinary supernatural miracles in the name of jesus christ and every delay retrogression everything that looks like it has put you in a position where you are a victim of time i stand by the power that raised christ from the dead and i speak to you finally tonight be released from it now be released from it now hallelujah those in front if you can god bless you you can return to your seat now my apologies for just stretching a bit of the time please lend me a minute or two i want to make an altar call listen please i want you to listen to me everyone an altar call is beyond a call to come and stand right in front here an altar call is proof of humility it is an admission that you realize you do not have what it takes in yourself unassisted by heaven to make the most out of your destiny are we together now when we make an altar call it is not and it's not something embarrassing that you just come as though you are some victim no it's an invitation the wisest decision known according to scripture that any man can make in this side of god's kingdom and every time god gathers a people like this all the experience centers all the other expressions across the globe who are following this applies to you too and for the many who are following online 
Here is an opportunity tonight that Jesus is giving you to make it right with him. Having a Christian name does not translate to salvation. Being a worker in church does not translate necessarily to salvation. Hallelujah. The Bible says there is no other name under heaven given unto men by which we must be saved. I'm going to make two calls in one. Number one, for someone here who is an apostle, I do not want tonight to end without me making this decision. I truly desire a relationship with Jesus. Number two, for someone who is an apostle, I cannot truly say that my Christian life is intact right now. I need to make it right with Jesus. I'm going to count one to five. I expect that you should be convicted enough to not think about it and dildal your destiny. As I count one to five, wherever you are within this auditorium, run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand here. I begin my counting now. One. Are we celebrating them? Two. Come to Jesus. Win that war finally. Give your destiny a chance for beauty and glory. Come. Three. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm ashamed or afraid of my friends. Come. Leave them and make it right with Jesus. Come. Someone is running to Jesus. Come. No shadow you will light up, mountain you will climb up, coming after me. No wall you will kick down, lie you will tear down, coming after me. I see a few people still coming. Please come. God bless you. Let's celebrate them as they come. If the space is occupied, you can stand. You don't have to kneel. Hallelujah. Now, those of you who are here in front, I salute you. Thank you very much for this bold decision that you have made. This is unto Jesus. This is for the sake of your destiny. Jesus said the, in, uh, the apostles in Acts chapter 3, they were caught to the heart and they said, Men and brethren, what should we do? He says, Believe, repent for the remission of your sins and that you shall have this promise he says it is unto you and to your children your children's children even as many as are far off them that the lord will call i'm going to lead you to pray a prayer and then the counselors will now direct you hallelujah for those who are making this decision all across the experience centers i believe that there might be officials there to help you and then you can make use of the social media platforms let um, the officials here, the media team, or those involved, let them know that you are making a decision for Jesus. And I believe that there will be people who have been trained to follow up with you. Hallelujah. Those in front, may I please request that you lift your right hand as a sign of surrender, high above your head, and say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe in you that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sin i believe that you rose again for my justification right now i receive jesus into my heart as my savior my lord and my king i declare that i'm a child of god from today and forever amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for these ones you have brought called by your spirit i declare by the authority of scripture your sins are forgiven and in the name of jesus i call you bona fide recipients of the life of god the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over your life i call you the righteousness of god in christ jesus you go from glory to glory and grace to grace in jesus name amen now um there are counselors are they going to receive okay now here's what you do for me all of you while we appreciate them there's a counselor lifting the placards please i want you to just follow them the counselors will have a word with you and you'll be back to your seat let's celebrate them as they go thank you let's celebrate them as they go